Welcome back to another lesson with Mrs. Taranjo at the Citizenship Academy. Today we're on lesson six, um, reading and writing about names. So our objectives for today is we're going to quote accurately from a text when stating facts and making inferences. We're also going to describe how graphics from Hello My Name Is, and you're going to draft the first part of your nar a narrative about your name. Some key vocabulary we're going to talk about. Uh, Nelson Mandela, a South African civil rights leader. Willie Nelson, a famous country music singer. Fair, attractive, having a light complexion. Oversight, careless error. Puritan, member of a branch of Protestantism. Protestantism, sorry. Antithesis is opposite. An astrologer, person who predicts the future based on the positions of stars and planets. So we're going to talk a little bit about personal essays and a graphic essay. A personal essay is an essay obviously written um, um, from one person's point of um, perspective, so it's about them. And a graphic essay is an essay that has supporting images that's, that go along with it. So we're actually going to read an example of a personal slash graphic story. I apologize about the quality of the picture. It's a little hard to read, um, but we're going to read it through it together, and then we have some stuff to do after. Hello, My Name Is by Jennifer Liu. The author of Hello, My Name Is calls her narrative a graphic essay. That's because she carefully selected images to add, to add meaning to the words of the text. As you read Hello, My Name Is, think about how the images provide details and descriptions beyond what is stated in the written words alone. Babynamewizard.com charts Jennifer as the, the most popular girl's name in the 1970s, the decade I was born. So this is the first image that she has selected, and as you can tell, it is a very, very popular name. There were so many people in my high school named Jen that I learned to not respond to it unless my last name followed. To understand how I got my name, you'll need to know the name of everyone else in my family. When my father came to the United States from China, he chose the name Nelson for reasons he can no longer remember. I th like to think it's after Nelson Mandela or even Willie Nelson, but it's more likely that it's because his Chinese name, Neng Yin, also begins and ends with an N. When my parents had their first child, they wanted his name to start with that same letter. They also wanted something unique. My brother's English name is Norbert. Babynamewizard.com shows that Norbert topped the charts at number 222 in 1920. It wasn't even on the top 1,000, or it wasn't even in the top 1,000 in the 1970s, the decade I was born. My parents also chose Norbert because of its meaning, Northern Brightness. It's Germanic in origin. Two years and 10 months after my brother's arrival, I was born. By then, my mother had learned that you can never buy souvenirs with the name Norbert on them. This is an example, you can't find any Norberts anywhere. My mom's chosen English name is Julie. So when I was born a girl, they scoured the baby name book for popular J names, and they fell in love with the name Jennifer for both its popularity and meaning, the fair one. What my mom hadn't anticipated was that because the name was so popular, souvenirs with that name were often sold out. So now we have two, two conflicting issues. One issue is they can't find any souvenirs with that name, and second, they can't find any souvenirs just because everyone else wants one. So my full name is Jennifer Liu, no middle name, nothing. Everyone else in my family has their Chinese name as their English middle name. It's, an official, it's on official documents, passports, licenses, and in my brother's case, his birth certificate. The middle name field on my birth certificate, blank. A parental oversight because they hadn't made the time to select a Chinese name. So you can notice, I know it's a little hard to see, but you can see the Jennifer, you can see her last name Liu, and how her middle name is empty. Having no middle name is even more significant when you grow up in white middle-class Connecticut where everyone has one. It was a rough childhood. Not only did I have to learn how to ski, how to play tennis, and, or, and how to tie sneakers around my neck, or sweaters around my neck, I also had to navigate Puritan New England middle-class less, or middle nameless. You're incomplete, friends would say. I took matters in my own hands. When I started seventh grade at Sage Park Middle School, I enrolled as Jennifer Elizabeth Liu. I picked Elizabeth because it was the whitest name I could think of. And my God, I wanted to be white because in Windsor, Connecticut, where less than 1% of the population was Chinese, 
White to me meant belonging. It meant being pretty and popular and the boys would like me. I had it in my head they didn't like me because I was Chinese. Different, but really they didn't like me because I was ugly. This is my seventh grade yearbook photo. The antithesis of delicate and fair. Notice the layered fro-like perm, the buck teeth and fangs. Thankfully, the black and white photo softened some of my brilliant fashion choices. A cantaloupe colored t-shirt with concrete gray collars and a smoking hot pink pair of glasses, thicker than a Coke bottle. By ninth grade, I was ready to shed my inner white Elizabeth, mainly because I thought the initials J-E-L looked stupid. I returned to plain Jennifer Liu and started to like that I didn't have a middle name. I liked that I was the only one in the family whose Chinese name wasn't their English middle name. I was two separate entities. My Chinese name, Lu Wen Yu. One May, I ask, Mom, what did you, what does my Chinese name mean? What? She said, annoyed. It doesn't mean anything. Well, what's Norb's Chinese name mean then? Also nothing? Oh no, his name means joy to the world. Of course it does. I later pressed for more clarification. I discovered why my Chinese name never became my English middle name. When I was born, my mom didn't have a Chinese name picked out for me. Instead, my mom sent all of my birth information back to Taiwan to a Chinese astrologer. She needed to know what elements to include in my name based on, the birth, on my birth details. If you know any, nothing else about Taiwanese culture, know that they are crazy superstitious. You can't leave rice uneaten on your plate, put your chopsticks standing up in the bowl, give an umbrella or knives as gifts, and your daughter can't be named without an astrologer. The astrologer said that my name needed Jade. This is the character for Jade. This is a common variation of the character for Jade. In Chinese culture, Jade is said to possess the five essential virtues of Chinese philosophy, compassion, modesty, courage, justice, and wisdom. Virtues she thought I might need when trying to be the fair one. So she continued, created my name. My mom weaved as much Jade as possible. Lu, my last name, means land. Wan means gentle, gracious. Wan is traditionally written with a female root. But mom took it out and swapped in the jade root. Yu is an anti antiquated version of the character for jade. I guess that makes my Chinese name mean the land of gentle jade. Pretty lame compared to joy of the world, if you ask me. So that is how, that is how I ended up with two names, a simple English name and a custom Chinese one. Actually, if you count my nicknames, I have at least 15 names. They range from obvious abbreviations like J. Lu to more story-oriented ones like Gimpy, Potty Lu, and Evil. Then there are the nicknames that reflect my stage in life. Five years ago, in the midst of a post-breakup and mid-career mid crisis, I came to a realization. There was no point in trying to be something I was, wasn't white or something so others wanted me to be, the fair one. I started making mass changes in my life, challenging old traditional beliefs from my past, particularly the negative self-destructive ones, and exploring new and healthier trains of thought. When you clean house and tear down the Great Wall, it's easy to second guess what you're doing. But I, but I perse persevered, and through it, I gained a greater sense of confidence. I started feeling free to myself, enough to so that the spunk and spark returned to, to my life, enough so that a good friend started calling me Jen 2.0. I would spit out a sassy, witty comment, and he would hiss, Watch out, it's Jen 2.0. So that is um, an example of a personal slash uh, graphic narrative because you can notice um, throughout the time that we were reading, there was a lot of images. This one, they had the Chinese characters in it. Um, she had her yearbook photo, uh, her birth certificate, things like that. Those are really um, help to support the story and make it more interesting because you kind of get to see it from, the, from your own point of view. So now we're going to transition into name narratives. So we've been um, doing your name narratives for... Um, we worked on your free write, and now we're going to um, look into writing a, an another one. So you can choose any of the three prompts below that you're going to be able to write uh, with your name narrative. Um, you can imagine a friend, a good friend of your family is having a baby, write to convince the friend to give the baby your name. What does your name say about you? Or write about a time someone got your name wrong. Well, with this, I actually created an example one for you so you can see 
um, kind of what uh, you're supposed to do. Uh, in the previous lesson, you saw how I got my name, Holly. Um, so now it's going to be a different kind of narrative that's still along with my name. While I was growing up, my last name always got mixed up. My last name used to be Gilarowski. It was a mouthful for most and many people mispronounced it. I was really annoyed and aggravated, aggravated by it. I got Gilarowski, Gilakarowski, I got Gilakarowski, and so many more. It was so frustrating because I did not see what was so hard about it. It wasn't until I looked up at my name a different way that I realized the spelling and sound of it did not make any sense. Now when people mispronounce my name, I'm not as upset about it. I usually laugh and pronounce it for them. I agree with them. It is a mouthful. So that's my own personal experience with my name, and it's looking at it in a different way. So again, these are my own personal narratives. Um, that's uh, the third prompt. If you want to do something similar to that, you can. Um, and you're going to complete that um, separately, and you're going to uh, send that to your teacher. So that is it for this video, and we will see you guys in our next lesson.